The horns have been blown. It is time for the final part of Campaign Diligent Insight. We've come this far. We've come to 1833. We're going to 1860 today. I don't care if it takes us an hour or two hours. God damn it, we're going the long haul. Oof. Just booted up the game. We're ready to go. So we just, last part, we had the Parthians taking on Paranakal, Salaunitha, also dealing some blows to Paranakal, and then Loon fully invading Shura. Shura is also involved in the Athenian con or Russian conquest of Athens, or the Delian League, and also the target of the Baronies of Avalon. Baronies, you also need to take this back over, like... I don't know why you're not. Null Sector's just building this up for you. Johannesburg is also going to be dealt another another blow by Loon. The De La Lach dynasty is just it's just too powerful. Boy, really the really the opposite here. Blue team with Simon De La Lach. 212. Red team with Charlotte De La Lach. 665. Male versus female. That's really telling a story right now. <laughs> but yeah, sort of. Um, Loon hungers more for your land, and you're gonna give it. There's no way around it. And Russia is going to take all of this land from the Delian League. Hold on. Okay, so it's so it's just Russia targeting them. And then the Delian League joined in Loon's War. You're allied? Okay, no. Illyria is all allied with Loon. And the Delian League was allied with Sura. And look where that got them. Nowhere. Low country. Or. Bahia is going after the Low Countries. Right? Yep. So Bahia thinks, oh, oh, I can, I can go all the way over here, right? I can go all the way. Wait a minute. Oh no! Bahia can actually. Oh no, they've already, they're already here. GG, well played, Bahia. Good job. <laughs> I, I don't really have to have anything to say to that. It's just like, good job, Bahia. You. Showing up the low countries, taking over South America. That's what it's all about. Oh wow, the De La Lacs are in, are on the American throne too. Interesting. I wish like New Albion would declare independence or something. Oh wait, no. What what happened to your army? You have a lot of alliances too. Meanwhile, the thirteen colonies they're all they're they're chilling. The baronies are over here. Sieging down Sura's colony. I'm wondering how much Russia... There it is. There's the peace deal. So Russia didn't take that much. But I think Prussia is going to take some stuff. That's if... Uh, well, I mean, like, how much are the provinces... How much? G give me, Give me an estimate. Okay, so not that much. Not at this point, at least. Actually, wait, Diacola Prussia, you have a parliament? Monta really? When did you get a parliament? Oh, is this from the German... Yeah, okay. Boy, your militarization is high, too. Good God. Do you get militarization? No, you don't. This is just straight... This is just straight from your shit. Okay. Johannesburg. If only. Alright. There's the peace deal with Loon. It took two provinces. Beirut and Nuremberg. Each passing war. Johannesburg shrinks a little bit more. Current wars, 
So Parthi is going after to push some thick. Loon is going after sort of still. Varnies are going after Alaska again. Alaska is pretty much dead. Pernakau is going after May, really. And they got converted by the Indian Roman Empire. Russia... Something tells me I've seen this somewhere. Russian and Japanese nationalists were. I, I don't know where, but I just I, I feel like I've seen this somewhere. It's uh, it's it, it just seems really familiar to me. And who who declared this? The Russians did, obviously. Boy, Japan, what happened to your? What happened to your military? That mounting debt is ridiculous. I'm... I really... I'm just curious. What what happened? What's the autonomy like? Uh, autonomy? There it is. There, no, the autonomy is fine. Like, very fine. Interesting. So they might... No. Uh, the, the, seemingly the revolutionaries... No, never mind. What am I talking about? The revolutionaries are gonna go, are gonna go hog wild. They're... Japan just has no army to deal with them. For some reason they've downscaled their army so much that Russia thought, Hey, uh, it's a house of cards over here. Let me just swipe at it. Yeah, first something is pretty much gonna die. I, I, the Parthians might actually navally invade too. What? Well, now Loon wants all of this, so okay. And Loon, how much did you take? You took a lot, my man. Oh shit! I forgot. Japan is allied with Diakola Prussia, so this is really about the Russians and the Germans. Oof. This is a huge fucking war fit for the 1800s. Can the Germans take on the Russian war machine of over a million? Prussian discipline and morale coming into play. The Prussians can knock them down, knock them down, over and over. But the Russians, they can keep putting them up over and over. Well, right here. Prussians. Taking a loss, and another loss. As much as they're trying, it's... I don't know. Russians also want, like, they want a lot from Diakola Prussia. It is no joke how much they want. Oh god, there's another one here. So, this is the fifth imperialist war between these two. Jesus fucking Christ, and Pernakau is actually dedicating. They are, they have a lot over here. Sell out, Nita, you need to plug this gap. Where's your, oh, your capital's right there. I don't think you're gonna lose this war, but it's like Furnikow is fighting back with what they got. And the Russians, they're streaming in. Prussia. Man the defenses. Oh lord, I don't think the there's just there's just not enough Germans to to just stave off the incoming wave of Russian soldiers, cavalry, artillery. Oh, real quick. Uh, and, you know, Russians are over here, too. Even as the revolution spreads throughout Japan, and Japan tries to rearm itself, there's... I don't think you're gonna survive. Prussia. What is your answer? The Russians are asking questions and you're not answering. Damn. Turns out quantity can beat quality. 
Okay, sell down need to plug the gap. And Punnikau is... They are heavily disarmed after that disastrous invasion. Sad to see that Purunakal is crumbling in the 1800s, but they've had a good run, I will say. And then Loon is going after Purunakal. Reggie Rock, this sin will not be forgotten. Russia, how much did you take? So you took one, you took two. So not that much. Oh, and three. No, so not too much land. But uh, in the east, yeah, you're taking a lot from Japan. The slow encroachment of Russian forces. It's, it's menacing. And then, what? Sell out Yep. Okay. Yeah. Same old, same old. Okay, Sell out took a little bit more. They're just taking chunks of East Africa. That's really about it. Loon, I don't know how Loon is going to get over here, though. Literally, I don't know how. Let's see how the revolution's spreading. Russia is almost completely revolutionary. It's spreading throughout Japan. Japan is like the closest one I can see to go to to becoming revolutionary. Everyone else seems like eh. The absolutism and unrest in Russia is not that high, and they're pretty stable. So it's kind of like, are, are are they really? What? What do you mean? Oh, shit! The revolution just... Just subsided. Okay. It didn't spread far enough and fast enough, and... We're... we're apparently, we're not getting anyone that's going revolutionary. Um... Okay. No revolution this time, folks. Yeah. Interesting. They still got as aspirations for liberty is just... It is going to hurt for a long, long time. Because I, I don't see how you get out of it. Unless you like... Unless the, the AI dumps more and more... Um, admin points into becoming st into three stability, they're not going to. Baronial Japanese Nationalist War or Imperialist. And yeah, Diacol of Russia just has a lot of enemies because they they're still sticking by. They are still sticking by their faithful ally of Japan. But Japan collapsed to rebels, you see. So now they are a federal republic. There is that constitution with this. The Japanese parliament. Republican virtues. Yep, it's all there. They still got a shitload of debt, though. That, that's not changing. And then... God, Southeast Asia is just such a fucking mess, man. Oh my god! My son! Well, not my son. The son is being killed by, uh... One of the, uh... One of my other children. Turns out my children don't like each other. Who would have known? Uh, the Delian... Illyrian Athenian Imperialist War. Okay, so the Delian League just has no friends, so eh. Yeah, Putanakal is on the downturn. They're they're struggling. They're trying. But unfortunately it's just it's too much. The Parthians. They're coming through. They know what to do. As much as the good navy matters, put in the cow, it's not everything. 
And even then, their navy doesn't stack up to to that of the uh, to that of the Parthians. Naval leader maneuver, man, it does wonders. Amerishan, Karika Mary Boginski, New Albion is ascendant in the New World. And they're actually okay. Their military is back on is back on track. So the baronies basically monopolized the new world. Anything that sort of tried to do is now gone. Low countries still, still over there. They're trying to do what they can, just eke out a living. Loon for some reason has land down here, but for the most part, South America belongs to Bahia. I believe this is all. <gasps> Oh no! Parthia, why did you stick by the camels? Now you've made an enemy out of your best friend! You are sh My children are idiots. I have nothing else to say other than that. My children are fucking idiots. <laughs> There's no fucking way Parthia wins this shit. If Prussia couldn't handle them, there's no way Parthia can. They're, the only hope, really, is, like, if the Indian Romans somehow get into a war against Russia. Because the Indian Romans, like, they, they have a lot of weight they can throw around. They, they, you know, they do. Tondo's coming back, Sulu. Tondo's been seeing what... Oh, God, yeah, Sulu's fucking... Sulu, Sulu's Catholic. Ugh. Parthia, why? Why make the mistake of defending camels? Salonitha, still out with that cold pressure. Oh, sure, you took a lot from the Horn of Africa and you gave land to the camels, but. Like, this, this, this alliance isn't what matters. This one is! But now. It's all for nothing. Are they. Are they how are the. How, Oh yeah, they're very hostile. <laughs> Russia's very hostile. It's interesting how how it's how this suddenly shifted in the final part. This part seventeen. Uh, Loon is attacking the Low Countries, and Tondo. Japan is attacking Tondo. Okay, so everyone's going after Tondo for some reason. I, I'm not sure why, but okay. Okay, so the Parthians outdo them slightly with discipline, but that's it. Other than that, they're pretty much dead even. Like, you can't stop the oncoming tide of Russians, it's too much. Illyria can't stop them. Lord knows the camels can't. And Lord knows the Parthians can't. I don't know why I'm saying it with an accent like that. Parthians. Parthians. East Africa is back again. So, next song, please. Next song. Alright, this is fine. So, Tondo, you've got yourself wrapped up in two wars, but, I mean, Japan's not really a... Th well, actually, they are, suddenly. They have 200,000 troops now. I guess being... I guess collapsing and having President Fusihito Uchi, you know, kind of did the trick to get you back in line or get that military economy started up again. Yes. Um... There's a there's a green leakage happening. It's uh it's pretty deadly. They took Kiva. No, they took Kiva. Someone needs to stop the Russians. But I fear no one will. They still have the fucking military hegemony at that. So they're getting less monthly war exhaustion, more foreign spy detection, more admin efficiency, 
And on top of that, national unrest going down, land attrition going down, and movement speed going up. And at maximum power, they have plus 10% artillery damage from the back row. Win more, why don't you, huh? Win more. What? What the fuck? What is Upper Egypt going to do with this? Also, old Egyptian culture. Holy shit, that spread really far. I didn't even realize. Got Hebrew culture as well. Interesting. Muscovite has uh, spread very far as well. So has Togoku. And so has Athenian. Greek. Got Ossetan, Francian, Burgundian, Francian, English, Prussian at that. And then Roman culture. Roman culture is still sticking around despite the fact that the... Uh, I think the Romans are gone, right? No, the Romans are still here. Oh, they've been relinquished to Ifni. It's a nice city, but it's like... Oh, the Abbasid Caliph is now in Ifni. Interesting. Yes, camels. How does it feel? You told the Parthians, we need you. You're sticking with us. And well, this is what happened. You lost this, and you and the Parthians lost up here. And now the Indian Romans think that uh, it's a good idea to attack the Parthians. They're not even the camels and Parthians aren't even allied anymore. My children are all suffering. And of course, Salonitas in this too. Oi! What is going on here? The Bahia Southern Brazilian. Sort of Brazil colonial war. Okay. More monopolizing South America. Go for it, Bahia. Okay. There's, yeah, there's not really much. Japan going to Tondo. So. Somehow you're always in a fucking war, Pun the Cow. Somehow. At least this one you can win. Part the like, how's your economy doing? Is your economy doing well at least? Yeah, they're not doing poorly. They don't have any loans. Then yeah, the same thing is uh, for the Indian Romans, brewmaster Drusus Domit Domita. Oh. The next, uh, next one is going to be the same dynasty as Sura and Johannesburg. Interesting. Yeah, the Indian Romans are coming through and the Parthians can't stop them. The Indian Romans, they have a lot of morale, but they don't quite have the discipline. They're, they're really close. You know, really, really close. How's a revolution? There's no revolution, right? We are clear of any revolutionary thoughts or desires. No, we just have... What is it called again? That's right. Oh no, they... Oh wow, Salonita. They cleared themselves of aspirations for liberty. But Gavaldon hasn't. Loon, what? Going after Johannesburg again? Yes, you are. Hey, what, did he, what do you even want from Johannesburg? Like, you should be fighting Sellout Nita, but there's just like, there's no there's no connection to them other than Sicily. There's nothing. There ain't nothing. Ugh. I think, the, like, whoever, whoever, whoever gets uh, stuck in with Russia in, like, a brawl or, like, a 1v1... Or even like a 1v3 where Russia is the one. They're just dead. The only hope is uh, Eleos up here in Gotland. Where they're on an island and Russia just didn't invade. That's it. That's your only hope. I'm surprised Paradox is still alive too. The tide of Indian Romans surges forth. 
How's the quality between these two? Parthians again have the discipline, but Salonitha has the morale. Discipline can only get you so far. You need that morale to stay in the fight. Bulgam is back. Oh, it's a bugged one. I... Because there's no ideas there. I am not going to risk tagging over to that. Okay, so Parnakal reconquered that. Cool. So is that doesn't mean anything. You still lost a lot. Most of East Africa, or most of the Horn of Africa. That's what it is. I wonder if the Indian Romans are going to go after Japan again. I suspect they are once that truce is up. Because Japan, they just, they can't do much. Same with the Parthians. They can't do much either. Like, try as they might, there's just no, there's no winning. Oh, wow. Now they're allied with Prussia. Huh. Interesting. Oh, oh no, I was let's say like Is Russia going to war with Loon? That's a huge war. Ten more years, folks, ten more years. Revolution? No revolution. Gavaldon is actually where's your army, Gavaldon? You usually have like a really big one. You haven't been to war in such a long time, sure, but you need an army. Oh, we have a new institution that spawned in, so I'm going to go check that. Loon, tell me. We have imperialism and it spawned in Karta. Of all fucking places. In Mataram. Can I, can I know what... No, I don't know. I can't know. But okay, imperialism, go. It's going to be spread all around the world. Like it shouldn't take long for imperialism to spread as an institution. It really shouldn't. 10 years should be enough. Try to make life hell as much as you can, Sura. It's not going to make a difference. Russia comes all the same. Someone please annex this this bugged tag. I don't want to I don't want to see it. God damn it, 13 colonies. Why can't you just declare independence? Why? Are oh, the core is still here? No. Chinese. Oh, but they, if they separate, they will. Uh, Mexican separatists? Okay. Alright. So, so meet the... Oh my god, my back. My back really hurts. Third Indian Roman in fucking holy war, great holy war against the cat. Why? What do you want? Oh, you want this. Well, that's understandable. I'm, like, really? You own Macau? Oh, the Parthians. Why did you have to forsake that alliance with Russia to just be with the to, 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 like, be friends with the camels. Now everyone hates you except the camels. Ugh. Russia has... Russia's only friend is Gavaldon and Bhutan. And they've warned the Parthians. <laughs> Interesting. Johannesburg. You're not even a theocracy anymore. You're an... Oh, no, you were always... Uh, you were always an autocracy, I think. 
But your dynasty is that of Sura. I wonder what you're going to take, Russia. I wonder indeed. Yep, they've already converted Kiva. God damn it. Ugh. Do you really need all these troops down here, Russia? Do you need all of these troops? 49,000, 55,000. Like, really? Is that necessary? Reconquest of Marek. What is Marek? Oh, okay. And then Loon is going after Paranakau again, but Loon can't reach them. So, eh? Yep. Rush takes over more of the Baltic. Gavaldan is going after bugged out Bulgam. Please annex it, Gavaldan. What about Tunis? Is anyone going to take over Tunis? Probably should. Anything going on? Other than the usual wars? No. Alright. Seven more years. Is that Brunei? Brunei, what? How badly did things collapse down here? I think I gave Mataram national ideas, but you're, they're orthodox, so they came from... Uh, they came from the Janarian Empire. And then Brunei. It's good to see them. Okay, so Russia, this is the fourth time you've tried to invade Eleos. What is it gonna be? I, I, genuinely, what is it going to be? Like, I understand that Illyria is an easy target and all, but the main focus is Gotland. You're gonna need to do something about that. That was actually the development. Okay. So, Middle East is actually very decently developed. Uh, the subcontinent scattered, but it's pretty good. Eastern China toward the coast is very well developed. Japan, very well developed. So is Korea for the most part. Siberia is eh, but... The, like, the, the provinces of Selkup that were up here, like, they, they, they stand out so much. <laughs> Europe is obviously greatly developed, but Gavaldin's land over here, near the Pyrenees in southern France, not well developed at all. Illyria's heartland, or at least this land right here, not developed that much. Same with parts of Hungary. North Africa's pretty meh, pretty poor. And then Selaunitha is West Africa, is very, has very scattered pockets of good development. East Africa... It's very meh. Same with South Africa, but I mean, South Africa, Chomp did a good job down there, I think. Australia. It's the only really good parts of, of Australia is Terre Austral by uh, Gavaldon. And the Americas, very well developed. Look at all that goodness. North America, not so much. Ravaged by war over and over again. The only really good part is, uh, <laughs> Cascadia, of course, and, uh, the 13 colonies, and around the Great Lakes. Well, northern part of the Great Lakes, I should say. You look toward fucking, like, the Texan area? Uh-uh. Nothing. Or, there's barely anything. I just realized, Johannesburg, since you, you went really tall, look at that. Look at these provinces. Very solid provinces that were ripe for the taking from Loon. And what is going on? Oh my goodness. Russia now has Constantinople, or should I say, Zargrad. 
Can Loon call the... Oh no, what? It's the thing I fear from part 16. Le Gasp. Jo so, George the Ninth de la Lac of the American, of Ameritran, has gotten a personal union over Loon. Loon is obviously not going to take this shit sitting down, but you know who's contesting it? Russia. Russia's saying, uh-uh. Russia, Loon deserves to be under me. And you know what? One million versus one million. Good fucking God. And the Indian Romans are in this too, so Russia's got this to worry about as well. This is like the best time to strike at Russia because they are so distracted here and here. Loon, you need to muster everything you got because Russia's going to be pouring through. How's that quality, actually? Loon, they're very similar on discipline, but Loon has the morale. That's the biggest difference. But you know what Russia has? They got sheer numbers. Loon has sheer numbers, too, but they're scattered. Oh, just look. They're trying so hard. They're using that manpower, burning through it. And even if they win... Like, Loon has to fight an independence war against Americham, which could go either way. Amer America might land forces here. Who knows? I think it would be heavily in the favor of Loon, though. This, though? Not heavily in the favor of Loon. What a way to, like, have the final part go, man. Like, contesting for the throne of Loon. RNG is a very fickle girl. Sell out Nita is going for Pernakal again. Kicking a cat while it's down. Piece of shit. <laughs> but I mean, Russia's not even. Russia's still over here, too. They got like a stack of 100. Good. The Indian Romans. They're dedicating a lot of attention over here. Ideally, the Indian Romans would be like driving toward Moscow or something or Rostov up there. But now that. The Indian Romans are allowing Russia to get reinforcements over here. Uh, but Russia's focusing a little bit more eastward. So Loon is able to consolidate a little and uh, gather their troops. If, if Russia does win this somehow and they actually force the personal union to be under them instead, that is fucking ridiculous. Russia's power will extend to the Atlantic thoroughly. And I don't know if Loon would win that independence war. I really don't. Gavaldon. Oh, they're a federal republic. Did they collapse? I think they did collapse. Interesting. Yeah, Loon. Get those troops up. Excuse me. Oh, Russia. This war basically decides the fate of Europe almost. It, it almost does. Russia was pushed back. The Indian Romans, they got fight in them. They're not going down without a fight either. The Parthians aren't. <laughs> they know they don't want to go on, go in on this either. Loon, you got you, you gotta be, gotta start invading. Gotta gotta start putting pressure. Gotta put some pressure. The Indian Romans can't be the only ones putting pressure. And plus, these are vast stretches of land, man. Like, the Indian Romans don't have too much in the way of movement speed bonus. The Indian Romans are very much focused on uh, early game colonization. 
And they have some military prowess, but it's not a huge amount. Russia's, I think, is a little bit more. They have a little bit more military potential in them compared to the Indian Romans. Are you not going to fucking go forth? Do you not have access? Oh, okay. Uh, apparently they don't. No? Grants conditional military access. Loon. Loon. Okay, no. Okay, they pieced out. Okay. Interesting. So the war is done, and now Loon is underneath Americhan. But obviously... This is not going to hold. Loon is definitely going to declare independence. And it's only a matter of time. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this war because it's, it's going to be such an easy one. It's across the Atlantic. What can, uh, what can the Americans do? Hey, Biden blasts separatists. So, Russia, what's the next war? Hmm? Actually, what, how much how much of your mission tree have you done? Partition, oh god, partition Poland. Liberate Bulgaria, they need a little bit more for that. And then they'll get the third Rome event. Zagreb is on. Do they have to? But what if Byzantium doesn't exist? Oh, I, I then I guess this might um. I guess something might give them uh, Byzantium as a subject. I'm not sure. Like I don't. What? What would releasing Byzantium give Russia? I I don't understand. Oh shit, they're about... <laughs> really, your absolutism is... Oh wow, it's not even at 50. Okay. Didn't even know that. Alright. Really? Your liberty desire is going down. I... I would think that they would be very keen on declaring independence, but I guess not. Indian Romans. Parthians are going after Pernakau. Pernakau is just on the downturn. But uh, we're about to end this campaign. It's about to be 1860, my friends. Oh, actually. Should we do, should we do 1865? Should we, should we see this a little bit more? Let me see the rankings. Okay, so only one. Okay, I'm going to give the campaign five extra years. Just to see these rankings change around a little bit more. Because I want to see the institutions being spread around. Or... The final institution spread around more. I thought 10 years would be enough, but I was wrong. Pardon the cow is not going down without a fight, Parthia. You better believe it. The Egyptians aren't ready to take this lost sitting down. But still, they're outclassed with discipline and all that. As much as Pernakau tries, nothing works. Sorrow ensues. Yeah. Five more years. I'm, I'm low-key also, like, really wanting Loon to declare independence. Because it's, it's so... It's so easy to get independence. Americhan uh, has no friends. It would be so easy. 
Actually, how many troops does the, do, do the Americans have? 600,000. About 700,000. You could easily, easily wreck them. It just sucks that, like, there's no colonial nations that declared independence. Tis be unfortunate. I wonder how much the Parthians are going to take this time, though. Gavaldon. Sura. There's, I, don't, I just don't see that. Anyone really stopping Russia at this point? I, I really don't. Like, how how do you stop one million Russians? I I would ask Ukraine, but Ukraine's not in this. Excuse me. How did you even get this? I I I just don't understand. I guess must be a skill issue. There's the peace deal. More of Somalia, or, well, the Horn of Africa, going to the Parthian Empire. The Roman Republic is being, oh, is being taken down by Shura, okay. I think this is the only, only province of the Romans left. The last one of the Roman Republic, Captain General Victor Al-Kazdugli. And their primary culture is Egyptian. <laughs> oh my god. They're not even Roman anymore. Uh, it doesn't get more comical. The Indian... Come on, you got one province left. One province left. Just like right up here. One province left. The uh, Baronial American Colonial War? It, oh, there's the War for Independence. We all knew it was coming. And the... Oh! Bahia declared war on America. Oh, shit. The USA is looking unsteady. Or... As I should I say, Nova Slovenia. But like, the Americans aren't a pushover in in their homeland. They can still put out a lot of force limit. Baronial Colombia has a shitload of holy fuck. The Americans might actually meet their maker. And Bahia, they're over 700,000 strong in the south. And Loon doesn't need to do a... They don't need to do a damn thing. They can just sit and look pretty. Parthians. Yeah, Diacola pressure is your best bet. But even then, it's like... Eh. It's Russia. I don't think anyone wants to trifle with Russia. How is Nanmodal doing? The Mecca of the East. Actually, is there anything in the Pacific? No, nah, the, the low countries got, uh, got over here. That's about it. Nothing really, nothing much really. The Americans are struggling. The administration's breaking down. Military competency going down the shitter. <laughs> There's three wars against Nova Slovenia. The Baronies know how much their colonies can put out. But what surprises me is, like, this is even while they are rebellious. The 13 colonies 
They're not doing anything. They're just chilling. It's all the other non-rebellious colonies that are actually doing work. Japan, how are you doing? Finally remilitarized. Oh, huh, Mataram got annexed. Is the Janarian Empire still even here? Demak. No, I'm not seeing them. Yep, I don't see them, and I and, and May got annexed. Huh. Okay. I guess the Janarian Empire is. Let me just. Oh. Oh, they are still here. Shit. Okay. They're just uh. Shia. And they are exiled. I guess the Pacific is the home of exiles. Oh, I I almost forgot. It's the it's the final year. Americhan, can you hold out? Oh boy. I don't know, man. They're trying. They, they they've got a they've got a death stack there. I don't know if they're gonna do anything with it though. Bar Baronial forces are closing in from the north. They're fighting in the northwest. You gotta stem the tide. Unfortunately, I fear that this will have to be the end of the camp. Oh, there it is. Peaced out just in time. But, uh, seems like Loon is gonna claim victory here. Even though the war isn't done. Oh, it is done. I don't need to say anything about that. I really don't. The De La Tour dynasty that was declared by Loon. Gone. And there we have it, folks. 1865. We will end it there. And then I will sort through these. I'll try and give the true ranking to uh, to, to all of these as they uh, as we end it off. So I'm gonna be going by this, their actual development, and not their rating. So. At 1865, the end of campaign diligent insight. In first place, we have Russia with 4,805 development. In second place, we have Americhan with 4,783 development. In third place, we have the Baronies of Avalon with 4,756 development. In fourth place, we have the Indian Roman Empire with 4,336 development. In fifth place, we have Diet Cola Prussia with 2,840 development. In sixth place, we have Bahia. Oh, no, no. In sixth place, we have Gavalden with 2,197 development. In seventh place, Excuse me. We have Bahia with 2,097 development. In 8th place, we have Sellout Nita with 2,001 development. In ninth place, we have Japan with 1,893 development. In 10th place... I, did I... I think I counted this right. Okay, no, no, I, I just did 8th place. In ninth place, I... No? No. I'm getting confused, because... Oh, God. 
Whatever, next in line. Uh, okay, this is 10th place. In 10th place, we have Sura with 1,457. No, uh, no, it was a Parthians. Oh my god. I'm getting flustered now. Next, whatever, I'm not, I've, fuck, fuck the places. Next is the Parthian Empire, 1,538 development. And then next we have Sura, 1,457 development. And then last place on the leaderboard is Pernacal, 1,190 development. Ugh, I knew I was gonna fuck it up at some point and I did. Ugh, whatever. That last in institution, man. Like, why? Why doesn't it spread faster? There you go. You can see the spread of it, actually. It should spread faster. Oh, well. There you go. And then, uh, I'll, of course, here's the political look of it all. I'll do the Southern Hemisphere after this. Just want to give y'all a good look at the map. As we end this campaign off, here's the Southern Hemisphere. Actually, let's zoom out just a little bit more. There we go. And remember, the Pacific Islands were the refuge of, of actually of a few. So we had Dottle Uji over here. And then we had, uh, what's it called? The Janarian Empire exiled to Wake Island. And here is the religious map mode. I'll zoom out for this one. Because it's, it's not as important as, like, the political map, political map mode. Uh, Russia was going hog wild on conversions uh, for the Eastern Orthodox. Sura was very tolerant of others. Reform spread like wildfire. Shinto stayed in Europe. Druidism stayed in Europe. Mazdaki spread like a like a wildfire. I don't know what other analogy I can give. And uh, we still had some some Is Islamic countries. I think we only had actually no, we had two. So we had. The camels stay, and then we had Darul Uji, and then the Janarian Empire flipped. Uh, the Roman Empire would be here, but they got annexed by Sura. The Roman Empire wasn't even the Roman Empire by the end. They were, they flipped religion and culture. And then Nova Slovenia turned to Marichan, bringing Hussitism all across the land. But Ankalit's uh, legacy of totemism still lives on in the northwest. Bahia flipping to reform after taking so much land, and then Neo Huo's Confucianism still remaining. And then it was, uh, I think, Atlantic's Atlantic formed Mexico and left Hellenism over here, which became the religion of New Albion. And yeah, it was. It was interesting times. And I'll give you a look at the development map mode. I went over it earlier, but... You can see the big picture. I think now we just look at the ledger. So, we're going to look at a few things. First, let's go over to the country. Uh, who had the mo Everyone maxed out at 112 ideas. Who had the most inflation? I am very curious. New Albion at 78%. Uh, what about regular tags? Okay, no... No one had super bad inflation at the end. Maximum manpower was Loon. That's like how much they have at the end, I think. It's not their potential max. And then for technologies, there were still more technologies to research. Uh, but 
there you go for who was at the top of the techno of the technology leaderboard. And power projection, Indian Romans at 100, Bahia at 100, followed by Illyria at 97. Interesting. And then let's look at governments. Uh, who had the most admin efficiency? Bahia, then Diet Cola Prussia, and then Lange. I fucking hate that Lange is still in this. I really do. And then the, the potential max absolutism was Bahia, followed by Colonial Nations, and then Diacola Prussia is the next submission in, with 117 potentially. Oh no, that's just their actual level. The maximum is right here. Bahia still had the potential maximum, so that didn't change much. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Uh, let's go military. The one I think a lot of people are waiting for. So army quality. At this moment, 1860, January of 1865, highest morale was Surda. 13.98. Then, the, then the Indian Romans at 13.61. And then Diet Cola Prussia at 13.59. And then for discipline, we had Diet Cola Prussia at 148%, followed by Bahia at 139%. And then the Janarian Empire at 135%, tied with Eleos. Mysore was still around? What? Excuse me? Oh, they were exiled. Okay. Alright. Uh, siege ability. I'm not going to go through these ones. These are less important, in my opinion. Everyone with that professional army. But, interestingly enough, army tradition, not kept up to date by most nations, or not kept up to snuff. Russia had the highest out of, like, the actual regular nations, and out of the player-submitted nations, uh, Baronies of Avalon with 87% army tradition, followed by Loon at 82%. Now that's interesting. Uh, armies. So, who had the most mercenaries? Indian Romans. Uh, followed by their manpower, with Loon at the top. Followed by Russia, and then Diet Cola Prussia. And total forces, obviously Russia dominated that by a fair margin, more than 200,000. Or over 100,000 at least, it's like a, it's between 100 and 200,000. Uh, and then Loon and the Union Romans. And the force limit of the Russians, 1,243. So the, le the one with the least amount of troops was uh, Dar al Uji, and then followed by the East African Federation, and then Alaric. Alaric was still alive? What? I thought they were dead. They're Shinto, and they had the Azores. Okay. <laughs> and then the morale. Naval morale. Um, Indian Romans dominate that. Followed by Diet Cola Prussia, or Sell Out Nita, and then Diet Cola Prussia. And then for durability, top two, Illyria and Persamdik. And naval tradition, dominated by Russia, followed by Sura and Americhan. Naval total. So, in terms of total ships, Baronies of Avalon are in the lead by a long shot, followed by Diacola Prussia and Americhan. It's interesting that no one had over 500 ships. I thought there would be at least like one nation with over 500 ships total. And then most heavy ships, Baronies of Avalon, most light ships of course. And then who had the most galleys? Gavaldin. Eh, okay. And then Japan. Who had the most transport? Who was looking to transport most? It was Loon followed by Russia. All right, interesting stuff. Okay, and then let's see who lost the most. I think there was no, there was no shot. It was gonna be anyone other than like Russia, the Indian Romans, or Loon. 
Uh, but Russia tops it off, 8.2 million, followed by the Indian Romans at 8 million. And then Par Parnakal, 5.91 million. Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, down at the bottom, who, no sector. They barely lost anyone. They were, honestly, uh, Tubi might not like me saying this, but they were barely a factor. Loon was, neutral land was more of a factor. Uh, is there anything else here? I don't think so. Economy. Uh, I don't think. Nah, that's that's like for my own, for uh, your own nation. Whenever you look at that stuff, and then country trade comparison. Yeah, okay. So who had the most uh, coming in from trade? The Baronies of Avalon, followed by Diet Cola Prussia, and then Pern the Cow. And then who had the most mercantilism? The Baronies of Avalon. Followed by the Indian Roman Empire. Then Mysore, Tondo, Corsica, Lanjiao, and then Illyria. Who had the most trade efficiency? You had the Baronies of Avalon. Tied up with Parnakal. Alright. And who had the most caravan power? 65 with Selaunitha and the Baronies of Avalon. All right. I think we'll look at like one more thing. Is there any uh, trade nodes, trade goods? Oh, we'll look at, okay, we're, okay, strategic goods. So, wow, Loon was the leader in a lot of, a lot of them. So one, two, three, four, five, any more, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, holy shit. 15. Okay. And then I think the only other one that rivals them is maybe Russia and the Indian Romans. Russia had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Nine, okay, and then the Indian Romans, I don't think they, they can outmatch them. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, I don't know if that's twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I forget, did, did I think I think that might outclass I can't remember how many Loon had on. My memory is just is fucked up right now. But still, I mean, just overall, that's a huge amount to be leading in. I I mean, I sh partially shouldn't be surprised because they own so much land and so they control so many things for production. But at the same time, it's like, holy shit. They got monopolies, almost monopolies on so many things. So, yeah, that was, that's really cool to see. Uh, much different from last campaign. Much, much different. Uh, but I think that's gonna be it for now, folks. I don't think there's really much else. Uh, okay, the last thing we can look at is, uh, score over time. Or score comparison. Who had the best score at the end, folks? It was Loon. Who had the best Or who had the best... Oh, is that... Oh, I think uh, per age is different. But yeah, at the end, it's Loon by a long shot. And then, score through the ages. So, who had the most in the Age of Discovery? Diacola Prussia. And in the Reformation, it was Diacola Prussia again. And in Absolutism, it was Loon. In the Enlightenment, it was Loon again, by a very far margin. And in the Industrial Era... Loon, but it was much closer. And in Revolutions, Loon again. But again, it was very, very close. So that's going to be it for this entire campaign. I, I, I got to say, this was a really fun campaign. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, the next campaign, it's even better. We refine the rules some more. We take out some really imbalanced stuff like for example uh holy horde is going to be banned i can guarantee you that 
Uh, and then we're also going to ban, like, morale in the traditions, colonists in the tradition. You know, some of that really generic metagame stuff. But uh, as for the exact details, I don't know for now. I want to thank you all so much for watching. This has been a very fun campaign to do. It's been a little bit stressful because I was under a time crunch for it. Because uh, Domination is out now for everyone. And so uh, I obviously wanted to... I want to play Domination too. I want to do a campaign in it. Um, but because of the time crunch, I had to rush some of these parts. Which is kind of evident. I recorded two in one night. And recording two parts in one night really tires my voice out. And it really tires my... Uh, my mind because I'm just focused on what's on screen I'm trying to commentate over it it's uh, it's not the easiest thing to do but you know I love doing these campaigns for the community I love uh, seeing the creativity that people bring forth and uh, most of all I love seeing their creations uh, make friends make enemies and just overall go at it in a world you know partially created by them you know, these, uh, these nations, aside from the vanilla ones, they're all dreamt up in the minds of people who submit them. So, uh, if you want, if you, the viewer, you want to join in, hit the, hit the Discord link down below. That'll take you to my Silver Knight Keep. And then, from there, we can introduce you to the campaign. Other than that, I've got really nothing else other than another thank you all so much for watching. Uh... Just the creativity and everything else keeps me coming back to these AI-only campaigns. The next one, I don't know when it's going to be. Probably within the next month. We'll see. Uh, but got really nothing else. Thank you all so much for watching this final installment for Campaign Diligent Insight. I will see you all in the future. I'll give you a shot at the leaderboard once more.